Hey, Ursula here. Let's take a look. We're at Gulf Wars, and I'm finally all set up, and I have way more merchandise than fits, but there's a lot of it, so let's take a sneak peek before we really get open. Okay, we're going to start on the right, and we have an incredible Tower of Looms again. Um, these are hybrid looms. <laughs> And I don't think I'm going to be touching that again. All right, those warp up. They can be warped up as if they were a rigid heddle. Or you can put cards on them like a card loom. Do card weaving, tablet weaving. Um, in between here, underneath this all, I have a standard box loom which is great for all of it for rigid heddle for card weaving whatever you want to do and i have ankles and in between all the ankles i've got some stuff i'm clearing out of my own um stash that i've had for years and never used so i have things like a snood another snood I have no idea where this rainbow hat came from. And underneath it is a big flouncy Renaissance Fair kind of hat. Definitely a um, 1980s, 1990s color. And this is a pocket. You uh, hang that on your belt and you put things in it as if it was a pocket. Um, in addition to that, I have head, these are based on the head bee find these are bag handles and then i also have some mini skeins this is a sport weight this is a thread weight this is a 220 wool it's great for hand stitching and then of course as we zoom out just a tad you see the entire wall of thread and I'll start at the bottom here. This is a 40 slash 2 thread weight linen. Pure linen. Comes from Europe. Um, it's, they call it Normandy linen. Um, it's raised in Normandy, but it's spun in mills in Poland. So we just say EU. Um, but I hand dye it. I hand dye it in Pennsylvania, USA. Um, over here, I have a slightly thicker yarn in linen. It's a 16-2 thickness. It's a little thicker than the thread. And this is really super strong. It's it, You can use it for card weaving. Um, ignore that. That's an Osberg loom, and it's... Uh, been commissioned and paid for by somebody and I'm just delivering it but I have nowhere to put it. All right so what I have here is a 16-4 linen and it's much chunkier in thickness and this is really great for knitting things with and uh, this is my excuse for not having lots of colors is I ended up with a giant tangle and until I can get these apart, there's no, not going to be any blue. Um, okay, so let's go above that. I have a Soie Natural. It's a um, raw silk is what it is. And I've hand dyed it in natural colors. This is um, cochineal. This is oregano. This is rose. And this is a different yarn. It's a uh, Irish lace, and I dyed that in indigo. Um, next down the line, hang this back down. This is a lace weight wool silk blend. It's called Zephyr, and it also card weaves really nice. You can see that makes a great handle. Um, comes in a huge assortment of colors. I'm just a little low on reds, but uh, they made it. <laughs> we didn't do 52 pickup. 
Um, this here is a light, call it a light, oh, it's not sport, it's a light fingering. Um, it's a waxed wool. It's a little bit stronger than um, other wools which are spun loosely to be soft. Um, the wax washes out when you wash your project and it has a huge number of colors as well. We don't have a whole lot in the way of golds right now. This is as close as it gets. Uh, they call that amber. But yeah, those are really fun to work with and I've used them as warp for making scarves. I'll show you one in a bit. Let's step back out and go up one more level. All right, since there's so many dye classes here at War, I picked up some, this is a fuzzy mohair, and this is how it takes a dye. This is matter. Um, so I've got those available. And then this is some of my hand spun. People always ask me if I've done any of my own yarn. And this is the only one I've got right now. I've been so busy. This is a cotton. Cotton does take a dye really nice. You can do natural dyes with cotton. Um, and I have a lot of this. This is a fun little... You can see that. And then I've got alpaca. I've got two different grays and a white. And then I have some brown over here. Okay, so that's this wall. Now, go to the checkout table. At the checkout table, I have decided that my hand dyed cotton I've got it in cotton and I've got cotton flake. These are all about four ounces. I've decided to, I'm never gonna get around to weaving these, so somebody might as well use them. I've got a few folklore patterns left. I only have two knoll bending needles that are made from Icelandic sheep bone. So, hopefully by saying that, I don't get banned on Google. Um, I have sachets to keep moths and bugs out of your stash. They're in organza bags so the smell comes through. I have more odds and ends of raw silk. These are bone needles for knoll bending. Then I also have mini skeins in sock yarn, tapestry needles, and then these are just pins. And this is a Jorvik pin. This is based on a design that they found in Jorvik. Jorvik is another word for York, England. It's from when the Vikings were there. And then behind me are all the shawls I've been working on. Some of these you may have seen before. This one here is a new one I just finished. I'm quite pleased with. And then, of course, purple. This is, this is what I call a chaos shawl. I basically take one of everything that I've got laying around in that colorway and just go at it. It's a lot of fun, uses up a lot of my stash. All right, so besides that, I have some fleece for spinning or felting. I also have some, if you need um, natural in a, I think it's a three ounce bag. And then I've got, these are my orphans. This is a super wash dyed in walnut and coffee and various things that gave browns. Each one is different. Some of those are um, the really thick stuff, the bulky weight. 
All right, from there, so we could step out a little bit. Yeah, there's not a lot of room in here. Okay, we have an inkle that's spoken for. That one has been pre-ordered in a beautiful, beautiful purple heart. Um, I've got some more Hedby bag handles. And I have, in here I have buttons and clasps. And you just kind of have to poke through. My display didn't fit in the van. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff. And then I've got sock yarn that I've na dyed in natural dyes. And a couple of them I did with a new product that is supposed to be easy on the environment but is not a natural dye. Uh, it's called Greener Shades. And then I have some lunchbox looms. I have rigid heddles. That's what you put on the looms we saw on the first table. All right, and then I have a weird assortment of books. Some of these came from my own shelves and they just need another home. Um, I don't need five copies of the Fabric Dyer's handbook, you know, things like that. Um, people give me things over time too. They're like, oh, you do this, don't you? Yeah. Um, these are dyed, this is called Periwinkle. This is a really nice um, thick boucle and I dyed it with the greener shades. That's greener shades. This is actually goldenrod. And this is cochineal. And then I did some in matter. I've got one in white and then the blue is also the greener shades dye stuffs. Um, let me go down here. These are all natural dyes. This is a sport weight. It's an organic wool. And then I've got a really large assortment of cones for weaving with. These are all one, well, these guys here are one pound cones. Um, and then I also have some other things that are I'm pulling off my shelves to just, like I said, I'm not gonna ever get to get around to weaving with this, but this one, just to show you how it turned out, it's um, a mohair, a kid mohair loop, and I paired it with uh, just a regular wool, and that's how it takes a dye. But, I mean, there's a, I don't know if that's three pounds. It says somewhere on it how many pounds. And then there's, like I said, more linen. There's cotton. This is a 10-2 cotton. And... This is a discontinued wool called Pony, and it's undyed. And that's what I paired with the Kid Loop. It's not a strong yarn. It would be something you would use as a weft. Okay, and then as we step back, and hopefully I don't walk into anything, I have a few straw hats left. And then I have, this is called Inca cotton. It's grown in Peru. It goes thick, thin. It's really, really nice for weaving uh, like triangle shawls or even knitting. It knits up just beautifully. Let's see if I can find some here. And I think that's considered a bulky or an Aran weight because it gets, goes thick, thin. It's it's kind of hard to say. This is oregano. This is rose. This cochineal. This is madder. This is indigo. All right. Then we're going to try to zoom out to see the wall of hats. I've got 22 hats this year. And I have them in an assortment of styles. Everything from the classic flat cap. Uh, we call this one a Harlequin. The pointy hats like the Vikings wore. Some with curls on just because it's fun. Bowlers, which are traditional, also 1500s. 
some taller taller pointy hats so that you can be seen out in the field and various scarves and I'm going to show you the scarf that I wove up this is alkanet I dyed this in alkanet but I paired it with blackberry in the heathers I used the blackberry as the warp and I used the uh, sock yarn as the weft and you can see it's just beautiful it has a lovely drape it's not stiff or rigid anyway that's that's one of my favorite scarves of all times that, that I've ever done then as we step back I guess I could zoom out that might be helpful I have that that is patterned after an Egyptian shirt it's basically a, a hoodie, a period hoodie. And I got that a billion years ago when I was nowhere near as big as I am now. And it certainly wouldn't fit me and it's been sitting in a drawer. So that can go to somebody else, make me an offer. I have lunchbox looms, that's what these are. They're about the size of a lunch pail. Then we have the three yard loom, Inca looms. That's what this is. There's a whole stack of these here. I have them in cherry in maple and in walnut. And then, so you can see, this is ankle weaving and I broke my thread for my shuttle. So that's gonna be a fun to find the shuttle again and get that going again. But that's on here. That one's in walnut. And then these are the five yard ones. I have quite a few walnut, um, maple, and cherry, and I even have some off to the side here that just plain didn't fit anywhere. Um, and the front table is all the little doodads. I'm going to start at the top. Angela is calling this a distaff, all right, a handheld distaff, and then I have uh, drop spindles. These are called high lows. They're by Schacht Corporation. You can spin with them as a top whirl or a bottom whirl. I have my hand dyed worsted weight wool. This one is called licorice, licorice twist because one strand out of three is dark, gets dark, picks up color darker. Um, I have a limited quantity of these. This is Larry Schmidt's Lessons in Knoll Bending, Great Hats. I have a couple of the ancient wire for Viking wire work. And I have Sprang. In addition to that, I've got pickup shuttles. See, you got a nice edge here to pick things, pick up stitches as you're working. And Lucettes. These are fancy shuttles. I have those in two sizes. I have them in long and a shorter size over here these are i have this is sewing all and he's calling these null bending needles because you can actually null bend with those i have thread winders in wood i have them in a hexagonal shape and i have them in a rectangular shape and what you see is all there is. And I've got some old issues of Shuttle Spindle Die Pod. That's also a make me an offer. Um, these are just regular ankle shuttles. This is my favorite style. It is got an edge on both sides, so it doesn't matter which way you're beading. And this is a regular where it just has one edge. So we've got a good assortment of those. And with that, I think that about concludes today's tour of the shop. There is a mirror on the front wall, which you will not see all the time. Yeah, that's me. You don't want to see me today. I've been out in the rain and all kinds of stuff setting up. So we're open tomorrow. Stop on by.